What's up, Scotters? So Yusung Jun, aka Steve Yu, is one of the earlier generations of K-pop artists that was killing it back in the days. He was literally on fire. And I think boys in my age group all had this type of hair back in the days, which was a trademark of Steve Yu. So in this video, let's find out how Steve Yu turned from one of the most hottest celebrities in Korea to becoming one of the only few men who have become exiled from Korea. <laughs> In 2001, despite his military service upcoming, the Korean government allowed Steve Yu to leave the country. This was not only because Steve Yu had a concert in Japan, but he also wanted time to say goodbye to his family before enlisting in the Korean army. And of course, this is regularly not allowed. Steve only had about a month before he was to enlist, and usually when it's about time for you to start your military service, you can't just leave the country for obvious reasons. So before he leaves, Steve signs a contract with the Korean government promising that he'll come back and then leaves to Japan and then all the way to the US. And despite making several TV appearances before and continuously saying things like, all men should serve in the military, I'll serve no matter what, blah blah blah, Steve Yu drops his Korean citizenship at the Korean embassy in Los Angeles and becomes an American citizen. And then he announces this to his fans by saying, I would be almost 30 years old if I get this charge and that would be the end of my career as a dancer and singer. I don't want to be injured during my service. I have talked it over with my father and decided to abandon my Korean citizenship. And for your information right now, Steve Yu was supposed to enlist as a public worker and not an actual soldier because of his back problems. And being a public worker means that you would live at your own house and when it's time you would go to work at public places like the subway station and when your shift is over you would go back and enjoy your freedom. So it's not like he had much in front of him. All he had to do was complete his public worker service and with his popularity at the time he would have had everything in the K-pop scene. And perhaps more most of you watching this video right now would have voted him as your favorite K-pop star instead of BTS or EXO. But like you guys already know, he didn't do his service. As soon as the news hit, the Korean Manpower Administration in charge of granting Steve Yu the permission of leaving the country, followed the contract Steve Yu signed, asked the Korean Ministry of Justice to not grant Steve Yu, now a foreigner, the access to enter Korea. And unlike the popular belief, Steve Yu is not a Korean man. Dual citizenship is really hard to get in Korea, and it's safe to think that most people in Korea have one or another. So if Steve got an American citizenship, his Korean citizenship would have disappeared with time. But this man willingly trying to avoid military service goes to the embassy himself and throws away his citizenship in a rush, which was ultimately his free access to South Korea because the Korean government doesn't exile its own citizens. So technically speaking, the Korean government didn't exile this man. They simply denied this foreigner visa from entering the country, which is probably a right that all governments in the world hold. Now some of you may say this in response and let me actually get onto sites like All K-pop and read some of the comments for you. Let's go to an article on Steve Yu and see what they say. So yes, let's look at the best comments. Funny how celebrity rapists, drug dealers, and pimps get to stay in Korea, but this guy didn't. Okay, so this is probably a comment that I was expecting I used to live in the US. So let's take the US as an example. If the US started taking all its felons who have committed serious crimes and started putting them in a bundle and started exiling them and sending them to other countries, and we're not talking about deporting as in deporting citizens of different countries, but their own felon Americans, would other countries be happy or would they even accept them? I think this is the same deal. As much as I would love to just send all these criminals out of Korea, that's just not how it works. And comments like funny how celebrity rapists, drug dealers, and pimps get to stay in Korea, but this guy didn't, makes zero sense because Steve Yu is a foreigner who's just not getting his visa. And these celebrity rapists, drug dealers, and pimps are Korea's problems that Korea has to take care of on its own. Okay, so let's go back to Steve Yu. Steve Yu, not noticing the situation is actually pretty serious, decides to just come back to Korea in 2002 without proper visa. He was held at Incheon Airport for six hours before going straight back to the US because he was a foreigner without visa. And that's what usually happens when you come to a country without visa. If I just spontaneously decide to go to Shanghai, China tomorrow without having proper visa, the workers at the airport is probably going to stop me and ask me where my visa is. To which I'm gonna say, you know, you guys probably see my YouTube channel. If you don't, you guys can go check it out right now. I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. So can you guys just let me in? They're gonna be like, you know, bro, you can just get out of here. That's exactly what happened to Steve Yu at the Incheon airport. The workers at the Incheon airport probably knew he was not a bad guy or that he wasn't here in Korea to cause any problems. But 
The workers can't just let you in without seeing your visa if you don't have a citizenship. What's funny is that he organized a press conference at Seoul's 63 building before boarding his flight to Korea, probably thinking that the Korean government wasn't too serious and that they were just going to let him in. But obviously, since Steve Yu couldn't make it to his own press conference, his plans for a press conference went straight out the window into the Hangang River. And even after seeing how serious the Korean government was in denying him the right to enter the country, Steve publicly announces that he has no will to go back on his decision and that he was going to keep his American citizenship and that once everything cools down he was gonna come back and continue his career for his fans unfortunately to Steve's surprise the Korean government denied him visa for 17 straight years except for once when the government allowed him to come to Korea for about three days to attend his father-in-law's funeral and they gave him three days because three days is how long a funeral is here in Korea so after leaving the country after his father-in-law's funeral was over Steve Yu never came back to Korea in 2015 Steve Yu does a live stream via Africa TV where he apologizes to his fans saying things like it hurts me to know that I can't enter my motherland with my children I tried to enlist in the army and contacted the Korean Manpower Administration but they rejected me because they said I was too old. If I can go back in time, I would enlist any day. And despite this apology looking pretty sincere, the public's opinion was not too positive, mostly for two reasons. One, the Korean Manpower Administration confirmed that Steve Yu in fact never contacted them before and that he wouldn't be allowed to serve anyway because he doesn't have a Korean citizenship. And two, after the live stream, Steve and his friends who were doing the live stream forgot to turn off the mic and used some bad words that seemed to be mocking the people in the live chat. These two reasons kind of combined together made the public assume that this one hour live stream was all an act and that Steve wasn't too sincere with his apology. Therefore, nobody really took this seriously. Instead, many people predicted that Steve just wants to come back to Korea and live here because currently he's an American citizen working in China. And by staying in Korea, he could avoid avoid a lot more taxes that way. Anyhow, in 2015, Steve Yu applies for a visa to enter South Korea at the Korean embassy in Los Angeles. The embassy denies his request and Steve Yu goes ahead and sues the Korean embassy. In 2016, the first and second ruling of Seoul High Court said that the embassy had all the rights to deny Steve Yu the access to enter Korea. However, just on July 11th of 2019, the Korean Supreme Court ruled that denying Steve's request for a visa is unconstitutional and decided to send the case back to Seoul High Court to redo the trial. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that Steve can get a visa yet, we'll have to wait and see what the Seoul High Court will rule, but there's no doubt that in 17 years this is the closest Steve Yu has gotten to coming back to Korea. And regardless of whether Steve Yu enters the country or not, many people predict that he'll have zero chances of coming back as a TV star. So now, what do you guys think about Steve Yu? Should the Korean government allow him to enter the country once more because 17 years of not being allowed to enter the country was enough? Or should the Korean government continue to deny Steve's access to enter the country because most of his citizens would want him to stay out? Leave your opinions below and if you found this interesting, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more K-pop news and interesting information on Korea. Until then, see you next time.